Hey folks, Rob here from Rovitix Media, your number one source for IPTV software. And we're back for another tutorial. Uh, we got quite a few comments on the last tutorial asking, well, how do I add my own content to it? Um, so if you want to go see that, click on screen here. I'll pop a little link up and you can go watch that tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the start to finish how to set up an audio based Roku app. It's going to do MP3. It will do Showcast. It's a great, simple little app, a good way to get started. So before we get into the tutorial, I just want to point out that uh, Roku has released a new version of their Eclipse plugin. It fixes all the errors with the latest uh, version of Eclipse. So you're going to want to go over to the Roku developer blog. I'll provide links in the description as always, and just read it over. It will walk you through everything you need to know to set up your Eclipse to do Roku programming. So check it out. Uh, like I said, links in the description. And they've also done another tutorial I just wanted to point out on packaging your channel. Now this uses just a basic method. So if you don't want to go through all the work of using Eclipse, you can also use this method to sideload your package on Roku. And sideloading just means installing it on your Roku device. Finally, I want to talk about if you're not interested in learning how to program and you just have a bunch of great content that you want to get out to the world, I'd like to recommend our new service, Cloud TV Network. Uh, this is a service that uses a cloud-based system to provide your Roku app. You can go into the dashboard and change everything from your logo to your colors, uh, your fonts. There's a lot of great options. There's a pro version if you want to sell pay-per-view and subscriptions to your site. We've got some really cool stuff, so go check it out, cloudtv.network. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do to get started is open Eclipse. Once Eclipse is open, you're going to want to go File, New, and then all the way down to Other, and we're going to find BrightScript. And we're going to create a BrightScript project, and click Next. And we're going to give this project a name. So you're going to want to call it your channel. So I'm going to call it my awesome showcast audio channel. So we're going to go down through. We're going to make sure under template we select none. We're going to create and make sure it's also selected up here. Uh, create a new project and workspace. And then we're just going to click next. And this will just give us a bunch of default directories. So we're going to click finish. So we're just going to want to click yes. And sometimes you have to go over here and find it. But under Project Explorer, we'll see my awesome Shoutcast audio channel. And if we open it up, we notice that the only thing here is the manifest. So we're going to want to just hold off on that for a second and go back to your web browser. And if you go over to the Roku SDK developer docs and do a quick search for audio node, or you can click the link in the description and come over to this page where you can find out more about the audio node. But what we're more interested in right now is going all the way to the bottom under example and example application, we'll see the audio example dot zip. So we're going to want to download that to your computer and now open it with your favorite decompression package. I'm using uh, WinRAR. So we're going to need to extract this. So I'm just going to go extract this all the way down here. And you'll see in your IDE directory, it has created a directory called my awesome shoutcast audio channel or the name of your channel. And we're just going to want to highlight that and unzip everything into this directory. So we'll click OK. It will give us a notice that it's going to overwrite some files. That's all right. We're going to click yes to all. And there we go. It's all unzipped. And now we're going to switch back over to Eclipse. Once you're back in Eclipse, we're going to go over to our channel name here and we're going to right click, go down to refresh and click it. And boom, we'll have all of our new files listed inside of Eclipse. Now, if you don't see your files here, make sure you extracted the files to the proper directory and make sure you do a refresh on the application as like that. Very first step always should be your step when you're creating a channel is you're going to want to go into your manifest. So we're just going to open that up and you'll see here it's got a title, subtitle, the versions, um, icons, which 
actually none of these make any difference at all with the new software for Roku. So they're just there for backwards compatibility reasons. So you can just ignore them and use the default ones because nobody ever sees them anyway. So down here you have some optional libraries to load. Uh, we're not going to need any of these for our example. Then we have our splash screen selections. You don't need to include an FHD one, which stands for full screen HD splash. But if you do decide to include one, it is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So next we have our background color. Now this is just the color that displays on an image that might not come up full screen. So you don't really ever see this background color um, unless you've made a mistake with your images. So I wouldn't worry too much about the color. And then we got the minimum time displayed. In this section, this will uh, show your splash screen for a minimum of X amount of microseconds, which is a thousandth of a second. So you see here we have it by default as 1000, that's one second. So if you wanted to make it five seconds, you would just put a five for 5000 and uh, the splash screen would display for five seconds before showing any content whatsoever. Now, I don't recommend doing that. You basically basically want to set this long enough to allow the content to load from your server, but you don't want it to be so long that people get bored and hit the back button or the home button, which they might about five or 10 seconds in if you still haven't loaded your content. Other settings is hidden. Never turn this on. So if you want to know any more about any of these settings, just highlight your cursor over the title and it will give you a brief description of what that setting does. And you can always find more at the Roku SDK blog. And finally, there's one last thing you're going to want to do to your manifest. It's down here under UI resolutions. And if you just highlight over it, it will give you a good description of what you need to insert here. So in this tutorial, we just need HD. So we're just going to type HD. And that's everything that we need to have in here. So I'm just going to go up here and click file, save. And now we're going to get into the real fun stuff. So how do you add your own content? You want to add your MP3s or your Shoutcast channel or Icecast channel. How do you do that? In the audio node example, there is a directory called server. And if you open up audiocontent.xml and we go down here and click on source, you will see we have a bunch of titles listed here under audio content. So before we get started really editing anything, I'm just going to show you an example of the app so you understand how it works. We're going to want to go to File, Export, and come down here and find BrightScript, BrightScript Deployment, and just make sure that and just make sure that all the necessary files are selected, which they usually are by default, but mainly anything in the components, image, server, and source directories need to be selected. And down here we have our options for auto increment, which I like to use on build, which means every time I build and deploy the software, it will automatically increase this number by one. And you can always use generate manifest build value as current date time, which will add the string to the end of the build version instead of automatically increasing the number. And finally, we're going to want to click install on Roku box. Once you do that, you come over to your IP address and select your Roku from the list. And you might get an error telling you that you are unable to authenticate developer mode. Um, just click OK. And we're going to want to go up here to password. And we're going to want to type in our password that we set when we set up the Roku developer mode on the box. And if you don't know how to do that, those are the tutorials that I mentioned at the start of this video. And that's all we need to do. And we're going to click finish and it will start to build. We'll switch over to Roku. Okay. And now we have our list here. And if you remember, if we go back over to Eclipse, you'll see where it says title and main menu, renderable nodes, Z order, parent, child. These names really make no sense to the application, but I digress. And if we switch back over, we see that those exact titles are listed here. So to get started, we're just going to come into our audio content XML file and we're going to remove a bunch of these. Now I'm only going to use three titles, so I'm just going to delete the rest and only leave three. So the first one I'm going to put in is going to be a sound cloud URL. The second one is going to be a libsynth URL for podcast hosting. 
And our third is going to be a shoutcast URL. So you notice it's going to say stream format equals MP3, which is perfect. That's what we want. We're going to leave that there. And then under URL, we have a link to an MP3 file. So I'm just going to go grab a SoundCloud URL. Now to get your SoundCloud link, you have to go through quite a bit of work uh, working with their API to get the URL to the MP3 file. I'm not going to go into description of that. It would take a pretty much an entire tutorial on how to do that on its own. So just for the example of showing you that you can use SoundCloud uh, available files here, we're just going to paste in the link that I was able to extract from their API. But the easiest way is just to find out what your favorite podcaster is using to distribute their files. Uh, I'd say over half of them are using Libsyn and the other half are using SoundCloud. So now the easy way to do it is to find the download link on, his, on their page, hover over it, right click and copy link address. And then we'll just jump back into Eclipse and we're just gonna wanna paste that link into the URL of our libsynth URL. I got that spelled wrong, it's libsyn. And next we're gonna wanna get a shoutcast URL. So I'll show you how to do that really quick as well. So we're just gonna go over to shoutcast.com and uh, we'll just pick this first one. So we're gonna wanna go here and you can actually pick any of these. So I'm just gonna pick Winamp as it's the easiest one for me to work with. And I'm gonna find it in my folder and I'm going to open it with Notepad. Uh, let's get it here on screen. Okay, so you'll notice that it has a URL here and we're just gonna highlight it and then copy it and go back into Eclipse. And in the URL for our showcast, we're just gonna paste it. Now, one important thing to note that I found out the hard way is if you just have an address with a port number at the end, so for example, this one where it's 111-223-518, and this little colon mark and a number, and for this example, it's 8600, this is the port number. So if you ever see that on here, it's very important that you add a slash to the end of the URL or this example won't work. All right, so now we're just gonna build it and deploy it to our Roku device. So as you'll see, it now has a SoundCloud, Libsyn, and Showcast URL. You can just click on them and they'll start playing. Like I said, on mine, it doesn't work so well because of the audio capture, but it's a really quick tutorial, an easy way to build your own audio station. And as always, you can go in and hack the code and make changes to the graphics and uh, you know pretty much anything else you wanna do because it's an example piece of code. Now, if you want more advanced features, don't forget to come over and check out Cloud TV Network, our Cloud TV hosting service, which is the easiest way to get up and running without having to write any code whatsoever. Everything's controlled from a simple control panel in the in the administrator dashboard. And you can come over to the website and find out a ton more about it. Watch our videos, take a tour, see the apps in action, and uh, find out about pricing and stuff. And don't forget, if you have any questions about the service, come over and check out our FAQ, which we'll list through and tell you pretty much everything you need to know about our service. And if you have any questions, comment below. We'll get back to you. Give us a like if you like this tutorial, and we'll keep them coming. My name's Rob, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.